fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friend. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden. Down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of The Man from the Second Earth. reaches of space that we get any true perspective of man's place in the universe. Rarely do we forget the little worlds of our own making and pause to glance up at the beckoning call issued by the twinkling of other worlds far out in the murky blackness of space. Too many of us think of the stars as an indirect but very appropriate lighting system for a warm summer evening. We forget that each twinkle of light may represent another world, another sun, another solar system in which life may be present in a form similar or alien to our own. Only occasionally do we pause to think for a moment of what the heavens hold for the future of man. Carl Rasmussen was an associate of mine at the Research Institute. Though engaged in different fields of research, a strong friendship developed between us. Besides his work at the Institute, Carl was engaged on a project of his own, the study of the strange radio waves which emanated from various parts of the Milky Way. I didn't realize how far he'd progressed in his hobby until that day in the cafeteria. And that's the extent of the progress we've made so far in our department. I think you're doing pretty well. I guess so. Bruce, do you know about my work at home? Yes, of course. Why don't you come over tonight? What's happened? You know, I've been trying to trace down the point at which those radio waves originate. Yes. Well, I've done it. Do you know what causes them? Yes, I do. What? An intelligent thinking being. Are you sure? I'm positive. And I've been able to decipher the message you're sending. Have you told anyone else about this? Not yet. I want to be absolutely sure, beyond a doubt. That's why I want you to come over this evening. It's just that I wonder whether Sharon will enjoy having me over again. Oh, she knows all about it. I want you there, Bruce. I want you to be the first to know what I've discovered. go back upstairs. No, you stay here, too. Well, I thought you wouldn't... Nonsense. I want you here. You've certainly got enough equipment, Carl. All the latest. I'll put it on now. It'll take a few seconds for it to warm up. What time is it? 8.30. We're right on time. I always begin receiving a signal at that time. A little more. What's that low hum I hear? That's the carrier wave. Yes, here it comes. He's a brilliant man. He's hope they've learned our language. What does the message say? See, I will try to converse with you tonight. Stand by. How could he learn to speak our language? I don't know, Rose. He said he was going to try, but that was about a week ago. I guess he's... Wait might... a minute. This may be it. Dr. King, coming, Rasmussen. Dr. King, coming, Rasmussen. Can you answer him? We're on the same wavelength, I think so. I am receiving you, Torquane. And I, you. We have established contact with each other for millions of light years apart. What is the name of your planet? We call our planet Earth. What do you call yours? We also call our planet Earth. And are you the satellite of a dying sun as are we? That's incredible. No. Our sun will burn in the universe for ages to come. You are lucky. Then how far progressed is your world? Our instruments recorded the radioactive blast some years ago. Have you harnessed atomic power? Can you travel in space? We have really just begun to experiment with atomic power. But I'm afraid that for us, space travel is many years away. What about your people? The way you talk, you must have learned the secret of atomic power some time ago. But can you travel in space? Yes, we have to learn the principles of space travel in order that we might save ourselves. For the time has come when an exploratory expedition must be sent out to discover a new world for us to inhabit. This is the last time I will contact you from here. This is Torquin signing off. He's gone. He stopped sending. Carl, I... 
Uh, I don't mean to doubt you, but are you sure this Torquane is real? What do you mean? Isn't it possible that someone's been playing a trick on you? A uh, practical joke? No, it's not, Bruce. I picked up the signal Torquane was sending several months before I was able to break it down and translate it. The radio waves actually came from somewhere in the Milky Way. Torquane said he'd been trying to establish contact with intelligent beings for almost 15 years. It was just recently that he directed the beam towards the Earth. Carl, he said something about an exploratory expedition and that this was the last time he was going to contact you from there. What did he mean by that? Probably that he was going on the expedition. Nothing else? What else could he mean? Uh, I see what you're driving at, Sharon. Torquane said he inhabited a planet in a dying solar system. It seemed to me that he was quite anxious to learn of what progress we've made in the atomic field and space travel. Why would he want to know if we've mastered it? Probably because he was curious. I should think he'd be more curious as to what kind of life exists here. Any number of things before he'd even think of space travel. That's right. And he also said that their instruments had recorded a radioactive blast some years ago. Seems to me they've been studying the Earth for a long time. And why should they study our planet so closely unless the exploratory expedition intends to come here to get a first-hand view of the Earth? You mean you think he intends coming to the Earth? Yes, then think of what that will mean to us, Bruce. Obviously, the centuries ahead of us in technological progress think what they can teach us. But what if they don't want to teach us, Carl? What if they want to conquer us, to destroy us? Well, why should they want to do that? Because their son is dying. They must find a new planet to inhabit or die with it. I think Bruce is right. I don't think so. I think he's like most of us, afraid of anything new. If Torquin does come here, I'm sure it'll be in peace. and the tale of The Man from the Second Earth in just a moment. Back now to The Hall of Fantasy and the tale of The Man from the Second Earth. It was almost five weeks later that the report appeared in the papers concerning the mysterious disappearance of the farmer who had called the police. The story leaked out and the newspapers carried the headlines, Who Was It? blazoned across their lead pages. At the time, I didn't connect the farmer's disappearance with what had gone before, but I've learned soon that there was a definite connection. Hello? May I speak to Bruce Marshall? This is Bruce, Sharon. Oh, Bruce. Bruce, I wish you'd come over tonight. I'm afraid something's going to happen. Is anything wrong? Not yet. But last night, Carl received a call from someone. I don't know who it was, and he wouldn't tell me anything about it. Well, that's nothing to get worried about. I'm not so sure about that, Bruce. Did you read the report in the papers about the farmer? Yes. Do you think they have arrived? I don't know. That's why I want you to come over tonight, Bruce. I want you to see Carl and talk to him before it's too late. Carl, who called last night? Was it Torquen? Yes. Then he did come here two days ago. And the farmer we read about in the papers. Torquen said the farmer tried to kill him. He was only protecting himself. By following him into the house and killing him? The farmer's not dead. He's being held captive on the ship. Where is it? I don't know. He wouldn't tell me. The Torquen said he came in peace. He doesn't want his presence known because he's afraid it might panic our people. That's why he's had to ensure secrecy. The papers played it up big. The people will forget about it in time. Who's that? It must be Torquen. Let him in. Oh, Bruce... I'm afraid. Maybe there's nothing to be afraid of, Sharon. If Carl is right, then Torquane did come here in peace. I thought you would be alone. So did I, but they already know about you. They were with me when we spoke together. 
They will not mention me? I know they won't. One is my wife, the other a good friend and colleague. Then let us proceed. You look so much like us. Why should I not look like you? Our worlds are very much alike. We too are warm-blooded creatures who developed as you did here on your earth. Our world is much like yours. Only it is older and dying as our son is dying. Why have you come here, Torquing? To see my friend, Rasmussen. I come in peace. So I understand. Then there is nothing to be afraid of, is there? That's right. I must ask a favor of you, Rasmussen. Anything you want. I request that we be allowed to store some equipment here in your house. That I be allowed to stay here with you. Of course. You can stay as long as you like. We can exchange many ideas, you and I, which may benefit both of us. I'm sure we can. When would you like to move in your equipment? Tonight, if possible. Can you do it tonight? I was sure you would agree to my plan. My equipment is waiting outside. We'll help you if you like. No. It is very delicate. My own people will handle it for me. Where may we place it? In the basement. Many thanks. One other thing. Yes. This does not concern you, Rasmussen, but rather your friend. As long as we remain here, I would suggest that you stay also. Why? You are a colleague of Rasmussen's. I should be interested in talking to you, exchanging ideas which may be mutually beneficial. I don't Bruce, think... please stay. All right. I'll leave now and come back tomorrow with my friends. Let me know where your possessions are. And one of my people will get them for you. I should hate to have you leave us tonight. Now I will tell my people to bring in our equipment. After we are settled, I shall see you again. Bruce, what time is it? Almost 11.30. Oh, Carl is still down there with them. I wish he'd come back upstairs. He hasn't been gone long. He'll be back up in a minute. Bruce, did you notice Torquane's face? Waxy and shining. It, it didn't seem real. It, it looked like a mannequin one might see in a store. And, Bruce, maybe I imagined it, but I thought it changed while he was in here, that it took on new lines, new features while he was talking to us. Yes. I thought my eyes were going back on me, but his face did seem to change. I'd almost swear that it did. Someone's coming. Oh, oh, it's you, Carl. Yes, it's I. Anything wrong, Carl? I don't know, Rose. Remember when Torquian first walked in here? He seemed so tall and thin. Downstairs, his shape seemed to be changing. It lost form, seemed to become fluid, and then would harden back into shape when he looked at me. Then we were right. Carl, I think Torquane assumed the form of a man when he came here tonight. I don't think his body is solid. I think his true form is a semi-liquid state which he can harden and assume any figure he likes. I think he's made up of a mass of living matter. Ah! What's that? Someone screamed. The farmer. He was down there. We'd better see what happened. Right, you stay here, Sharon. Be careful. Did you talk to him when you were down there? The farmer? Yes. Was he all right? Yes, but he seemed a little dazed. Torquane? All the lights are out down there. The only light is streaming through this door. Wait up. Look. Yes, I see him. Do not come down here. We heard a scream. I'll take a look at the farmer. You keep Torquane talking. Right. Why is it so dark down here? We are resting. Why did he scream? He was frightened. Why don't you let him come upstairs with us? He will remain with us. There's nothing wrong with him, is there? Nothing. He's all right. Let's go. I've seen enough. We'll go back upstairs then. Do not come down here again unless we call you. Bruce, was he all right? All right, nothing. He was stabbed. What? That's right. There was some kind of wet, oozing substance all over him that seemed to be alive. I heard something down there, Bruce. Like the bubbling of water. And yet not like it. No, it was too thick to be water. Carl, I think there's something down there that could very well destroy us all. This thing you spoke to from the other planet Earth isn't a man at all, but an oozing, undulating, living mass of matter bent on our destruction. You are listening to The Man from the Second Earth on this week's journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy. We'll return to our story in just a moment. And 
now, back to our story. An original tale of fantasy featuring Jim Amici, entitled, The Man from the Second Earth. We stood there in the hallway beside the door which led to the cellar and the things that were downstairs. Carl and I had heard a scream, and when we had gone down there to investigate, we found the farmer lying dead on the stairs. This thing you spoke to from the other planet Earth isn't a man at all, but an oozing, undulating, living mass of matter bent on our destruction. When we saw him, he looked like a man. I know. Evidently, they can solidify themselves when they need to, can assume any shape they desire, but they can't hold it for long intervals of time because the features change, melt into each other. Poor King seemed in a hurry to get downstairs. Evidently, they can't remain in a solid state too long. Who screamed? We better tell her. What happened down there? The man they held captive is dead. Then they're not friendly. No, they're not. What are we going to do? Well, I'm going to call the police. What's the matter? The line's dead. Dead? But how could the... Look. Where? At the window. Looks like a heavy layer of oil is covering the glass. You're right. Look! It's moving. I'm going to see if I can open the window. I, I, I can't see the movement. Stuck tight. What about the door? Don't even bother. We won't be able to open them. Torquane took care of that, too. But we have to do something. We should never have established contact with him. He'd have established contact with someone else, then. Evidently, the conditions here on our planet are equivalent to the conditions that prevail on theirs. But there must be other planets in the universe where the same conditions exist. In all the vast reaches of space... Surely there must be others that approximate the Earth. That's right. They must have come here for a definite reason. But of all the planets in the universe, why would they choose ours? I can explain that to you. <gasps> He's right in back of us. How did you get up here? I came up quietly. I did not want to alarm you. What about the farmer? What about him? Is he still all right? Yes. You're lying. He was dead when we left him. You know then? Yes. What did you do to him? That is one of the answers as to why we came to your Earth. By coincidence, we named our planet Earth also. But life on your planet followed a different evolutionary pattern than did life on ours. Your life developed from the one-celled creature spawned in the depths of the sea. You became the animal you call man, with its disadvantages of never being able to change your form. We still are the protoplasmic beings that once you were. Only we developed along that evolutionary line, and you did not... That still doesn't explain why... I am coming to that. You live on energy converted from plant and animal life. So do we. So why did you come here? Because the slow death of our sun has destroyed all but a small portion of the plant and animal life on our world. There is not enough heat, and we can no longer sustain ourselves. On your planet, there is an abundance of both. On your planet, we shall establish a new world. What are you doing? Lighting a cigarette. That is what you call fire? Let me see it. The matches? Why? I want to see them. Here. I thank you. On our world, we never had a use for these. It is like a tiny sun. How brightly it glows and how... It is too warm. You shouldn't have held it so long, Torchain. I do not like this thing you call fire. Look. God. His hand. It's melting. You have not much longer to live. Enjoy your last minute. What does he mean? He means they intend to kill us soon. We've got to get away from here. How? What can we do? There must be some way to destroy them. How can you destroy a living mass of matter? Let's try to figure it out logically. They left their own planet because their son was dying and unable to support adequate life. They feared the cold, so they'd freeze into a solid and be unable to move. But it's the middle of summer, and we don't have any refrigeration equipment downstairs. I know, but what's the opposite of freezing? Heat, boiling, burning. That's right. Did you notice what happened to his hand when he was holding that match? Yes, it began to melt. That's right. And he seemed afraid of it. I think there are only two ways to destroy these beings. Either to freeze them... Or to burn them. And we can't freeze them. But we can burn them. How? This house will burn. But we can't get out. We'll burn with it. Maybe not. The window wouldn't move, but it might break. We can get out that way. Well, what if it won't break? That's the chance we'll have to take. Let's start ripping the curtains and drapes down, Bruce. They'll burn the easiest. Right. All right, let's go. I'll go open the gas burners in the kitchen. Good girl. That'll help it along. I'll be right back. Well, pile them up over here alongside the wall. All right. I just hope the rest of the house catches. So do I. If it catches and the gas gets dense enough, it should explode. There's some more over here. Sean! I'm coming. Hurry! Cut 
Oh, got everything open in there. The oven, the burners, everything. I can smell it from here. Well, that's the last of the curtains. Oh, look. Seeping under the doorway. They must have smelled the gas. Oh, light the fire. Hurry. It's seeping through faster. It's swelling up on all sides of the door. It'll break through the door in a minute. It won't hold much longer. Fire's catching hold. We've got to get out of here. Let's go. Use that chair on the window. I will. Hurry. Let's hope it breaks. Here we go. Get worse. Climb through in a hurry. All right, here. It'll help. There. Now, uh, run as fast as you can. The fire seems to be dying down. They're trying to smother it. If only that... like we can save it. That's all right. What did you have down in your basement anyway? Some chemicals? Yes. Yeah. I've never seen anything burn like that before. Yeah, I'd better get back. Well. I didn't think we would. I'll never forget it as long as I live. But it's over. Yes, for a while. But who can tell what will happen in the future? What other forms of life are present in those stars you see? What else will come from out of the sky? So runs tonight's tale of the unusual, the terrifying, the unknown. Join us again when next we journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy to hear another strange tale of the supernatural. All characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. <laughs>